On today's show, a doll-sized robot that can pilot planes. Plus a car that is powered by salt water. Also, we check out a 3D printed Raspberry Pi powered laptop. Mmm, yummy. It's, it's not only delicious, it's Tomorrow Daily. Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best tech talk show in the known universe. I'm your host, Ashley Skyler. Joining us once again, Rich DeMuro. Hello. If there was a crowd of people here, I'm assuming they would be cheering. I think the new design in this set would twinkle. Yeah, it's well, something. it's that you have the sets twinkling for you. Well, it's, it's like a, uh, you. it's like those little wind chimes. That's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. You can't like, really it, tell in the We don't get a breeze video, in here. Sorry. Yeah, they would like clink together. Pretty. I, I like it though. I, it makes me feel like I'm in outer space. Like we look at oh, the back, yeah. it's kind of like stars yes. twinkling kind of. I don't know, I, I kind of dig it. Anyway, um, we've got some really cool stories to talk about today, so let's hit the headlines. <laughs> so our first story is about PyBot, which is short for pilot robot. I love this one. I totally love this too, this is awesome. Uh, he is only 15.6 inches tall, so he's, he's about this tall, he's not very big. And he's been trained by researchers at Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, or KAist. Uh, it's, a, it's actually an off-the-shelf humanoid bioloid premium by Robotis, modified to be able to work the controls of a cockpit simulation. So awesome. So it's scaled down to mini <laughs> robot size. So there he is. He's working at the, working the cockpit. He's got all his buttons and stuff. It's pretty great. He's prepping for flight. He's going to get out there. Um, and it's so it has a video camera built into its face and that has software built in for runway detection and other visual cues so that it's able to kind of see what's going on in the simulation itself so and knows what button to push. Is it a human that's controlling this or is it autonomous? Like is that video camera linked to like a monitor that a human saying like, okay, push these buttons? No, I think it's that it's programmed to recognize. So it's relatively autonomous in that it knows the process of, okay. of taking off and landing a plane. And so um, now they're saying they actually want to not only do that, they have the simulation nailed down and apparently it does very, very well. I'm sure he does in a simulation. It's successfully flown in a computer simulation and, a, and it has also- I've successfully also, flown in a computer simulation. I know, fair enough. X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, that's, that's, that's my, and it, it, but it's also done a real world scaled down model biplane. Okay. So um, and now they want to do a full size plane, but that yeah. Seems who's dangerous. gonna Who's gonna get on that flight? Not I'm me. I'm not getting on that flight. Although no. I have full trust in a lot of these computers, you know, the the error, you know, they're not gonna make as many errors as a human. As a, yeah. But I think you know, takeoff landing is a big deal when it comes, you know, because they it they is. made the joke on Thirty Rock years ago that like planes fly themselves autopilot. Yeah. Now for the most part, they do actually fly, do a lot of the heavy lifting themselves while themselves. you're in flight. Um, but when it comes to that takeoff and landing, that's where like the human comes in. Right. And also any sort of emergency or unknown or variable. So right. I, I'm curious how this thing does in those situations. I don't want to be on the flight to find out. You almost wonder if like maybe someday we'll have one of these robots behind glass as like a break in the case of emergency. So like maybe the pilot and the co-pilot are like somehow incapacitated idea. and you got to land the plane. You put a robot in there and robot lands the plane for you in an emergency. Or maybe it's a co-pilot and you have like the- Maybe it or, is. Or maybe it's a captain who's flying the plane. You have the co-pilot who's sort of just watching to make sure he does. I mean, there's no doubt about it that these robots are going to be able to fly planes in the future. I, I mean, know. we have monorails well, that They're already driving, drive our, driving cars. Driving cars somewhat. Pretty so exciting. I think it's funny. I just love the look of it. I think I they should make they should have so made him into like a Muppet. He looks so cute. They need to add like, like some fur. It looks like Jim Henson fur. made this thing. <laughs> it does look a little too adorable to be functional. Like I, look at, look I at love this. Thing. I'm I'm falling in love with this robot. Like I if know. I got on the plane and I, you know, looked They're in the like, cockpit oh, and saw you, oh, you look, you're like, so like give cute. a little noogie maybe. I know, he's adorable. So yeah, that's the uh, that is the flying, that's Pi Bot, pilot bot. Um, but yeah, final approach line. I mean he does everything, which is pretty freaking cool. Can he serve me a drink? Uh, no, that's probably a different robot. Okay. Maybe get a MIP. Get a MIP robot. It's got a little tray sticking out of its Yay. chest to drive around. That'd be pretty good. Perfect. Tell me about the saltwater car, because this seems pretty exciting. We have a lot yeah, of saltwater I mean, in is, California. I was going to say, there seems to be a lot of saltwater around the world. So yeah. this would be an amazing uh, alternative fuel source. But basically, it's a car that is powered by saltwater, and it's called the Quant E Sport Limousine. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Long name. Uh, it's been in development for 14 years. Uses a new kind of energy storage system called Nano Flow Cell, which sounds like a very fancy Apple-y name. You know how Apple, yeah, yeah. like focus pixels. Retina. Uh, it's capable of speeds of up to 217 miles an hour, 372 miles on a couple of gallons of salt water. Oh, so wait, is this, okay, so how does the salt water 
churn into fuel? Well, I am no scientist, but they say an electrochemical reaction is created by combining two liquids with the metallic salts. Okay. Um, so it and then they're put through it, and then they're, own... then they're pumped through like a fuel cell. So mm. I have a feeling this is one of those things where they maybe did a proof of concept, but it's really tough to like mass produce or replicate in a big way. Well, but, I know, um, was it 2009 there was a car that was supposed to be salt water powered that was yeah. met with skepticism and never made it to the road at all? Yeah, that's what's interesting. So it made its initial debut. Uh, yeah, another car in 2009 never made it to market. So, mm. you know, I'm sure people have been working on it. I mean, this would be the holy grail of alternative fuel source. I mean, how yeah, much salt water do we have? I always wonder when you just take a sip of salt water, you're like, my gosh, like it would be so great if we can just use this to drink and it's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Well, desalination is really, really expensive. But I guess like didn't they, this is like a new thing now where they got official approval in Germany to test this car, at least on roads. Do it. I mean, so, it looks great. Yeah, this is like uh, this company got official approval in Germany to test it on roads, which is farther than that last car got. And I think that's sort of the big thing here is that yeah. we're actually, we might actually see this. I would imagine it generates a little bit more interest now that it's like, okay, well, you yeah. can test it. I mean, I doubt, here's the thing. If this was really a car that was meant for the average consumer, it wouldn't be this sporty. Like this is no. some sort of like high concept, end. high end, yeah. you know, super expensive. But I love where they're going. And, uh, you know, they say the fuel cell, the only byproduct is water. So I'm guessing Perfect. the only byproduct in this one is like, Probably water. Water still. you can drink. Yeah, water, desalinated, desalinated water. Desalinated water. Uh, no, I, I, I dig this though. I think this is really cool. So it's some kind of fuel cell uh, alternative to what we have now for like hydrogen fuel cell cars. Hey, this fill is a me salt up. water fuel cell car. I wonder if you could just fill it up, like fill up the tank with like your hose and then like put in a little teaspoon of salt. I'd probably be more salt than that because you'd have to, it would need to be more alkaline. But yeah, that would be kind of awesome if you could. I would love that. It would be amazing. Uh, okay, so very last story today. The, I love this. It's going to be a Kickstarter, but I thought it was so kind of remarkable on its own that it needed its own story. This is the Pi Top. This is a 3D printed Raspberry Pi powered laptop. This is a laptop you're going to be able to order the parts for. 3D print yourself very affordably. Okay, uh, no, no set price yet. They're uh. going to announce it on their Kickstarter, but uh, it's a kit designed to help people sort of uh, learn how to design products, learn how to build those products. Uh, also, you know, do extra modifications to things like laptops. They're teaching classes and all these other things. Um, it's really, really neat. I love this. I think it's so cool. Uh, the goal is, and they really love it. Like, would you use this? Well, what? I wouldn't use it as an everyday thing, but to teach people. I mean, this is going to be the 3D printing is the future of products like this. I mean, oh. someday in the future, could you imagine having a 3D printer in your home where it prints out aluminum and, and everything and you print out your iPhone or you I print out know. your Galaxy I, Note? I feel like I, I agree with that. Like, I do think 3D printing is going to be big in the future. I just like everything I've seen, it's kind of like it's not the best looking. Well, not yet. But the thing is, know, that's the point is that it's an affordable. But here's the thing. It's supposed to be affordable. And well, so and the I, plastic and I get the is affordable. And instilling into kids, like, you know, how to build yeah. stuff. And like, like as a kid, like I love taking stuff. Yeah. And how to, you know, I mean, it's really cool, but it just doesn't like, I just, everything that I've seen 3D printed has like those ridges on it, you know, right. it's kind of like it's 3D printed. Well, I'm sure you could paint it and make it look really nice. Like you could sand it down, make yeah. it look really good. <laughs> sand down your laptop. Yeah. Sand it down. Well, sand I down the like parts after you get the, because you can either 3D print the three pieces that it takes to build or you can uh, pr you can order them or print them yourself. And what about the stuff inside? So you used to get you still have to get like the whole kit the Raspberry it's, it's Pi a kit. like it's a kit and it okay, comes so with it comes like LCD comes with the battery that mm -hmm. has six plus hours on a single charge, a Wi-Fi antenna so you can get connected right out of the box, a keyboard with a trackpad and a, thir a 13 point3 TFT LCD screen so and it's HD it's a little over 720 um, 720 the resolution and the latest Raspbian OS so it's got the Raspberry Pi OS on there as well I, you know I just love anything with Raspberry Pi because all the too. puns with the name are so great Raspbian. it's just Raspbian so great. OS Raspbian. so weird but I just like the idea and I guess they're gonna do um, you're going to start with the kit and then they'll say, okay, well, now that you've done the beginner stuff and here's like web tutorials and everything, now we're going to take it to the next level and here's how to modify it further. And so they're going to go from beginner to advanced level programming, developing and designing as well. So they're going to say, okay, now that you've designed this, like now you design a new thing. It's, so I just think it's cool. really neat. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll take mine a la mode. <laughs> Probably take your pie top a la mode. Yeah. 
Fair enough, fair enough. If you want to check it out, it's uh, pi-top.com. Like, you can go check out their website, and they have a bunch of information there. And then I'm sure there's a sign-up for their Kickstarter for when it goes live. But it's really, really neat, and I, I kind of love it. And I just think it's really cool for, you know, like this next generation of kids coming up into programming stuff. Like, yeah. this is the kind of thing that you would want to get them into. What are those little kits called? The, um, you know, like the kids, like, put it together electronics. Well, there's a lot of them. Well, the Le Lego has no, Evo not has the Lego. Mindstorm. It's like, it's like the main brand, like Little Bits or something like that, or like oh yeah, you know, gosh, it's like I don't it's remember. like Transformers and all. Like I, but I saw, you can put them all together yeah, with and like, like programming. make like simple like machines and stuff. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of that. And it's really like yeah, like in our generation, we had like like and do you remember like ham radio? Like yeah, it, yeah. I had like a little radio that I like oh, and solder it was so cool in and you like put it all together. And then you could like talk to other people. I mean, it was crazy. But like that was so or like a chemistry set. But nowadays it's gotten very advanced. Like, Everything is like laptop. Yeah, it's like the new. Like, exactly. Forget our stupid ham radios yeah. from when we were kids. Now <laughs> kids are going to be building your own laptops. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, but that's it for our headlines. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. We have uh, a couple of really fun things. We've got new releases. It's Tuesday. And then, of course, we have your user feedback and our phone tiger for the day. So don't click away. It's Tomorrow Daily. <laughs> We are ready to talk about uh, one of my favorite parts of the week, which is it's Tuesday, and you know what that means. It's new release time. So we have some pretty good stuff this week. Yeah. We have the Equalizer, Denzel Washington. Apparently, he is the Equalizer. I'm going to guess that's... I'm thinking that after he's, watching he's the trailer. The Equalizer. Yeah, if you watch the trailer, it's like he's got a normal life. It's kind of... The but kind he's of the, also the Equalizer. He's also an Equalizer, which some kind of violence. I think it's that it, like some, when bad things like happen to good violence. people, he's like, he goes and gets them. I think so that's what he kind of equalizes the world. Yeah, you know, vigilante like, justice. But it looks... I mean, this, I'm not going to give away anything that's not in the trailer, but I love the part in the trailer where I guess something happens at work where someone, like, you know, robbery or hold up or whatever, and, like, the next day, you know, he takes, you see him, like, taking, like, a... A, a giant, a giant metal like, mallet yeah, off, like the off the rack. But off the rack, and then he, like, and then he returns, like, the lady finds, like, whatever they stole from her the next day, and you see him, like, polishing off the mallet and, like, putting it back putting on it, the rack. Putting it back, so, like, oh, I'm oh, good now. Yeah, I'm just, like, crack someone's head open, yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, now I'm going to put this back. This was used to murder somebody, yep. but I'm just going to put it right and back in the store. you're going to buy it at Home Depot. <laughs> So, you think know, about that the next time you shop at a home improvement store. I, I think about it all the time, like how dangerous the things are that they sell there, it's like all the tools true. and stuff. It's very weird when you think about that. It is very, very weird. Especially I, when you see this movie. Like, I know. You Now you're really going to the... think about it. I know. You see somebody like polishing off some sort of like hacks on, you're like, I don't yeah. know. I'm going to pick the one behind it. But that looks good, that movie. <laughs> no, it looks pretty good. It's getting decent notices over on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got like 80% of viewers liked it. And then it comes out this Friday, wide release. And I guess like, uh, I think it's like 70% or so, like maybe 60, 68 or something Seems like, like that. Seems like it'll be a good rental. It might do well in the theaters, but it's yeah. probably going to be a really good rental because it's like that movie that you like sit at home and like it's a little yeah, bit of popcorn, thriller. Yeah, popcorn flick. Yeah. yeah, it seems really good. So I, I thought that was really cool. And then also we've got two pretty big video games coming out this week. Uh, first up, we have Hyrule Warriors for the Wii U. This is the Dynasty Warriors slash Legend of Zelda hybrid craziness fighting kind of game that I have just... I've loved so much seeing all the Nintendo Directs about this game. It, is this what they showed off at E3? Yeah. Like, this was, like, the big... Like, wow, that came out pretty fast. Well, this is... Okay, so there were two different Legend of Zelda games at E3. So there was this. Okay. And this was a little bit more fully fleshed out. And this is sort of... See, it's, like, all these group oh, fighting. Oh, yeah. Like, all but this the stuff. other one, they just showed, like, the world. They showed the yeah. demo really quick where the monster came yes. all the way from the mountains and everything. Yeah, this is a different game than that. Um, but it's a nice little sort of, hey, here you go, like Zelda fans are getting something for the right. Wii U. I know you have to wait a little longer for this like fully fledged Zelda game. Uh, but it looks really, really fun, and apparently there's a little more to it than just like your basic hack and slash sort of group thing that you can play as a whole bunch of different characters with different abilities. I'm really excited about it. Comes out this Friday. I'm going to get it. I, I gave producer Logan my code. Am I allowed to say? It? I don't even know if I'm allowed to you say can. that. I probably can't say that on TV. Rich won't. Rich won't play it. So That's it. That's there's the no last. bias. Rich will never play it. So it's a, there's no there's no collusion. It's the last there. time I get a code from Nintendo. I know. I know. And then and then of course we also have Disney Infinity Marvel Super Heroes 2.0 Edition, which uh, all the kids are going crazy for. This was like a midnight launch thing. There's I people think, waiting yeah. outside last people night. People are going nuts for this. Yeah. It's uh, it, this is the 2.0 version where they now have a lot of the Marvel superheroes. Uh, we've got the Avengers in there. They're going to be, you're going to have Rocket Raccoon. You're going to have Groot. You're this gonna is have all such a winner. This it really is, is, I mean, 
The thing is that's interesting is like Skylander sort of pioneered this idea of like they the did. little come to life characters. But like I feel like Infinity had like such a better like built in world. Universe, yeah. I mean look at I just saw like the Epcot ball. I mean look at all these characters. You can name like almost every single one of them. Yeah. Whereas like the Skylanders, you know, it's all new. So Yeah, and it's I mean it's really I mean look how amazing it looks. Yeah. So you got the toy box, you got the whole play set where you can go and play the story mode and I mean, it's just so cool. Like, I'm dying for that. And then, and then they're Nintendo's going to do the same thing. They have Amiibos yes, where you're going to be able to import stuff. That they're might even be. I mean, because Nintendo people love those characters. I don't that think might it's a. Be. I don't think it'll be a world building game like that will. Which that's like the appeal for this is like the toy box is so cool. But I think that the way that they sort of incorporate, like you said, with Nintendo, mm. it's like all those characters that everybody loves. You just like scan it on your Wii U, and boom, they're right there in the game. Which is that's cool. Pretty neat. I kind of, yeah. I really dig that. So yeah, those are your three things for new releases this week. Uh, which means it is now time for your user feedback. <laughs> Yesterday, we asked everybody to tweet us with hashtag TD Bat Wars and tell us uh, what they would want to see, like in the the next, what's the next shot fired in the J.J. Abrams, Zack Snyder Twitter war, Star Wars versus Batman v Superman. I don't know. There's a lot of V's in there. V Superman v Batman v Star Wars. So uh, Rainier wrote to us and said, Luke, I am your father, Batman, TD yeah. Bat Wars. Hashtag, I watch tomorrow daily from my iPhone 6 Plus. Wow. Well, the screen is certainly big enough. Just it don't is. put it in your pocket and bend it. Yeah, don't get bendy with it. Don't put it in your front pocket and then sit down for long periods of time. That's the thing now. It is not the G-Flex. No. No, it is not. It will not. It's not self-healing glass. That is not going to come back for you. Um, man, that video was really painful to watch. I just can't, I mean, I just feel bad watching like a new device Somebody being just like. Somebody just bend it right out, yikes. Uh, and then of course we have Tony who wrote to us and said, uh, TD Bat Wars, you may call me master, master Vader. Mm -hmm. You're Don't getting, say that fast. You're getting you're getting on the edge there. That was living on the edge. And then he's got the uh, the Darth Vader with the Batman costume underneath, which I mm. thought was pretty great. That took a little bit of work. That was a little bit of work. But, you know, the most work that was done, and I will say this came from this email that we got this morning. Really impressive. This is from Sahaj. He says, CNET peoples, I would like you people to show this in one of your episodes. By the way, I'm a 13-year-old who's watched every single episode, and I need help designing a video game, <laughs> a third-person shooter with a free roam multiplayer. Okay. okay. Check out this image that he made. It's the craziest thing ever. Uh. I love it. It's got Imperial Star Destroyer and C-3PO and Gotham and Darth Vader and Batman. It's just... There's a lot going on there. There's so much happening. Look at Superman's on the on the oh, hood wow. of the Imperial Star Destroyer there. So did he... It's literally great. This is... Yeah, this is a, this is a interesting world he's built. I'm in. Sign me up. I'm in for that. Uh, so I, we need to help him with this video game. I, what are we going to... What's a good... Like, I don't know. There's so many... You know what you should do, Sahaj? You should... Do some historical research. Find an event in history that you feel might make for a really cool, uh, a really cool thing. Like a setting. Like a setting, or even just like the storyline of the event, and then put it in a different time period, Ooh, like okay. futuristic. Like make it really futuristic. Or if it's like really recent, then make it like a thousand years ago, and like st keep with the storyline, but change the time up. Yeah, that's I think cool. that's a good that's way a to do it. That's a smart way. But then you also have to figure out how, like how to make the game. It's true. It's that's, true. That's probably a little bit tougher. But you've got plenty of time. You're 13, so you're you're good. Set a goal. Like maybe you want to have this game done by the time you're 20. Yeah. Or 18. Well, listen, five I years. had I had goals when I was 13 of like I would like to uh, have a Dr Pepper after school. Like it was never like I had did very you ever small goals. Attain that goal. I, I'm sure I did at least once. Hmm. But yeah, I did, like you have very large, very big goals. So kudos to you. For I that. wanted a jolt. A jolt call. Like, I didn't know what that would do to me. Ooh, jolt. You can kind of get jolt. You can get surge now again. Well, yeah, now, yeah. You can kind of get surge. Yeah. Sold out a lot. I don't yeah, know. We I'm saw not... a case on Amazon for like $240 yesterday. What? Craziness. You want to make a couple extra bucks, go buy some surge on Amazon yeah. and flip it. Uh, of course, that is uh, now means it's time for your hashtag of the day. And your hashtag of the day today is TD Salty. Mm. And I like this question. What solution would you be powered by if you were electric? So you'd be powered by Jolt. Yeah, no. I, at this point, I'd probably be powered by Red Bull. Oh, or no, okay. You know, I actually like Five Hour Energy better because it's right, like you'd smaller. Are you powered by Five Hour Energy? Would you just still need one to like power you? For how you long? Five, five yeah, hours. Yeah, five hours. <laughs> <laughs> that one kind of has the built-in answer. Um, whereas with Jolt and Red Bull, you don't really know it's how long like, it gives yeah. you wings for. You'd have to kind of do your own like mile testing and see yeah. where you wear see out. What, when see when you, you like. Go down. <laughs> You're like, oh, time to what crash. What would you be? 
Uh, probably chai tea lattes mm. with a shot of espresso. Ooh. That's what I would be powered by. That's what Green I, that's... tea latte is also really good. Yeah, they are really good. Those? I have, yeah. That's they're good. really good. My wife, I made fun of her for like telling me how great they are. And then she's like, just get one. I get one and literally I had like three more in the next three days. And then days. you ate your words. I love and, it. Or you drank your latte, words. Technically, yeah. Technically, yeah, you drank your words. Uh, but that is it for our user feedback. So that means it is now time to check out our photographer of the day. Our photographer for today is a landscape picture, mm -hmm. panorama. Um, this is from Alec G. And he sent us this shot. It said, sent from my iPod Touch 5th Gen. This picture was shot off a balcony within walking distance to uptown Denver, Colorado. My name huh. is Alec. And from this picture, you can see uptown to the far left. Uh, I watch your shows, and I love both of you in a non-intimate way. Thank you for creating these shows for us to watch. I was just in Denver till last night. Yeah, and just yeah. Got back, and so it was you, a great city. Similar view. Uh, I'm trying to think where this was. I don't know. Um, but downtown is great. They have like uh, a whole, like, you know, we had Third Street Promenade here. Yeah. They have that for like two miles. Just like oh, every, wow. it's called like 16th Street. And it's like literally every restaurant, shop, whatever you've ever heard of. But here's the weird thing. So it's like this pedestrian alley. But or walkway, then they have these buses going back down, like where you can like take them for free and hop on. And, oh, it's, it's so like long. a little like trolley bus kind of. Well, thing? no, it's like a full-on bus, oh. which is kind of weird in the middle of like a big pedestrian street. That is very weird. So anyway, good job, but I think you could probably ditch the buses. But it's so long that I guess people don't want to walk all the way back. Yeah, but Alec, that was a really awesome picture. Thank you so much for sending it in, and we're happy to make the show for you. And we also love you in a non-intimate way. So the feelings mutual. Um, all right, well, that is it. If you want to submit your picture for our photography of the day, send a link to your image to tomorrow at cnet.com. Uh, you can also send us your hashtag of the day if you don't, if like Suhash, if you don't feel like. Feel a little uncomfortable. Feel, if you don't like Twitter or you yeah. don't use it, you can always just email us. Just use the hashtag of the day in your subject line. Um, and you can also find us all over social media if you do like using Twitter or other uh, avenues to tomorrow talk to daily us. on twitter tomorrow daily on facebook tomorrow daily on instagram and tomorrow daily tv on google plus there's so many there's so many um what uh and and where rich where can everybody find you individually to street ask you corner. questions about all oh. of your oh well on the street corner just like today you got har harassed by a <laughs> passerby who was like hey that's rich on tech show me your iphone 6. Sh somebody walked up to rich in a chipotle and said Show, all right, show me the iPhone 6. It and like he did, had back. no I idea. I was like, yeah. And then he asked you for all your money and pointed well, a gun know. at your face. Well, I didn't know. It was just a little bit like taken aback. No, that's like, scary. You know, it, is, it was just kind of weird, you know, like the, the way to start a conversation. That you is You can also weird. say, hi, I like to watch you. Hi, hello. You know? I have seen you on television yes, and so would like to would see like to if you have an like to interact with you as a human 6. being. Yeah, don't just walk up to somebody and be like, let me see that iPhone. But the best part is, like, I just give it to them. Like, I'm just like, oh, here it is. Because, like, I don't, like, I assume. And then grabbed it and ran. I assume nobody's going to, like, just take a phone and run. I don't you know. hope not. Maybe not. But I mean, maybe your fans are nice enough to not do that. Usually, I would hope so. Uh, Rich on tech uh, on Twitter or Rich DeMiro. Either way, it'll get there. Pretty good. Yeah, it'll get there. But just like if you see Rich in person, don't run up to him and demand to see an <laughs> iPhone because it's a little weird. And then you can find me on it on Twitter at Ashley Scatha, all over the internet at Ashley Scatha. I'm all over the place. Uh, that is it for Tomorrow Daily. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new show filled with the wide, weird, wonderful world of technology. Uh, until then, be good humans, you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.